Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'll be showing the first part of my new series which is called Exploring the Facebook Graph uh, API using React. And uh, in this first part I'm going to be exploring the very first step of creating a Facebook app which is uh, generating a user token and uh, how to validate that token to figure out like what kind of permissions did we actually get from uh, the person that signed in? All right. So um, Facebook has some great documentation here where you can read about access tokens. Uh, the Facebook API is not so simple as other APIs. Uh, we have both user token, apps tokens, page tokens, and client tokens. Um, but uh, I'm not going to go into more detail about these entire tokens just yet. I'm just going to take it from yeah one end to another. So today we'll focus on user access tokens, okay? And uh, as I said, I'm going to be using React and I'm going to be using Next.js. And the reason for using Next for this um, series is because, well, we're going to be working on the backend and the frontend. So uh, Next.js is a good fit because we can do both of those things. All right. Okay, so um, I have, have a fresh project here with Next.js, uh, just running uh, npx to create next app. And uh, in here, I'm going to first transfer my project to a TypeScript project. So underscore app JSX, uh, underscore app JSX, or JS, I'm going to turn that into TSX. And my index file is also going to be with the TSX extension. And then I'm going to rename my hello route to hello TS. Okay. Now I can do npm run dev. That should prompt me that I'm missing a package. I'm going to be installing that one. This is the types for React. Then I'm going to try to run it again. And this time it's going to create a tsconfig.json for me. All right, that is the dev server I'm running, and uh, we can verify that by opening a browser window. All right, so now next step is to authenticate the user and generate a token. And uh, to do this, I actually am going to use the SDK from Facebook, uh, since that should um, make things a lot more smooth. Now we have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, we do not have a SDK or a library specifically for React. So we're going to do the, do the next best thing, which is going to be to, yeah, just grab a script tag here and then use it in our page. Now, since we are using a next site, we're going to have a problem just putting a script tag in like that. So we need to do it a little bit different. But uh, if we open up our app.tsx file here, uh, we can import a fragment. And then in here, we can add a script component. From next script. And then we can put in our script here, oops. Let's just, uh, let's actually just put the whole thing in here and then remove the stuff we don't need because this script component has the same properties as a normal script. And cross origin needs to be capitalized O. Source is okay. Let's move this last bit. Okay. So now that's a script. That's the first part of using the SDK. The next part is that we need to attach a function onto Facebook async initialize on the window element. Yeah, and here we also put the app ID. So we could add an inline script here, but to get a little more control, I actually prefer to put this this in a use effect. So in our um, in my app here, I can create a use effect. 
can pass in a empty dependency array. And then I can basically put this in here. Okay. So now you can see we're actually getting a little bit of uh, some curly braces. Oh, some curly, red curlies here saying there are some issues. And uh, yeah, that's because of TypeScript, but we need to fix that in a moment. So we actually need to change this snippet we put here. Uh, instead of doing fb.init, we need to do window.facebook.init. And the reason is we don't have, because um, we're putting this on the window, so we need to be a little more explicit here since we're in React. If we were in the browser, it would be okay. Okay, so let's save that. And uh, next step is gonna be to remove these errors here. So since we are using TypeScript, let's open up another window here and let's grab the types for the SDK. Okay, so let's do npm install types Facebook SDK. And let's make sure we save it as a dev dependency. All right, after adding that, we have access to the types for the Facebook SDK. And you can see that we already have one error gone here, just automatically without doing anything. So that's kind of cool, but this one is still not gone. So we need to initialize or we need to reference this uh, property in the window. Okay. So in the root folder, we can add a new global dot a new declaration file here, TypeScript. Okay. And in here, we can export declare a global. And here I'm targeting the window. And here I can put my fb async init uh, function here. I'm just going to put it to any for now. Because I don't really care too much about it. I just want this error to be gone. All right. So that should actually be all for setting up our Facebook. So now we can try to call the login function. So let's go to our index file. And uh, let's try to clear out some of this. We can leave some of it in here just so I have something to look at. So let's have to remove this. And then save and then go in here, then create a button. That says login. Now let me remove some of the stuff here. So here we can have an unclick handler. I'm going to pass in a reference to a function that I'm going to call login. I'm going to jump up here and define it. And this login function is going to call f uh, window fb. And here we can call the login function. Okay. Now this login function does take a callback as the first parameter. So this is after the login has finished, like what happened. So here we can get a response. And uh, if we try to console log here, we can see the response have an off response and a status. And this off response has an access token. So this is if we actually logged in, we will get the access token here. So this would actually be our user token. Now let's just add a callback here that says if response status is equal to connected, well, then log our access token. Okay. Now we also have a second parameter for this login function, and that's going to be a object of some yeah different properties here. One of them is scope. And uh, throughout this series, we're going to be changing the scope around because we want to 
two different things in the graph API and for that we need more and more permissions. But initially we just need the project profile, perhaps, which can yeah, return the user's uh, first name, last name, picture, stuff like this, some very basic stuff. Okay, so if you save that and we go to back to localhost 3000, make sure we are on HTTP, we can try to press login here, see if something happens. All right, so it seems like it did trigger a, uh, a login here, but it's complaining about init didn't really work. And the reason why is because we are currently on HTTP. So we actually need to be in HTTPS whenever we are doing a login from Facebook or to Facebook even, and even loading the SDK, as you can see. So there are two approaches to this that I know of. One of them is we can create a custom next server that serves up an SSL certificate. Or we can use a tool like ng-rock that basically uh, tunnels our local host to a public domain which has an SSL certificate. And that's the tool, that is the approach I'm going to use. All right, so the next step is actually to add ng-rock into our project. So we can run that server. So we can do npm install ng-rock. And after that's done installing, we can go to our package.json file. And in here we can create a script called ng-rock. And then I'm just going to call ng-rock http 3000. And that is my ng-rock script. So now if I open up a new terminal tab here, I can do npm run ng-rock. And that should actually spin up a uh, instance on this address. Okay. So now I'm actually ready to do the login, but just before doing the login, I'm going to create the functionality on my backend to validate the token that I'm going to get when I do the login. All right, so if you have a look at the documentation here for the debug token endpoint, we can see that on the permissions, we require either an app access token, so this is another type of token, or an app developer's user token. And actually, if I'm logging in to this app, it would actually be okay just using my token. But uh, for more general case, where we want to verify everybody's token, uh, probably we'll get further just using an app access token. So the first step is going to be to, to uh, uh, create an app access token. And in order to do that, I'm going to show you this page once again where we have the token types. If we go to app access tokens, we can see we need to call this endpoint in order to get one. And basically we are exposing our app ID, our client secret, and then we get an app access token. Okay, so this is our first step. Going back to the code, let's create a function called get app access token. And here we're going to do a, oh, let me just import fetch from node fetch. All right, so in here we're going to do a fetch. I'm just going to copy and paste the URL in here, which is going to be this one, graph Facebook, access token, blah, blah, blah. In here we have an app ID and a client, or a app ID and an app secret. So that we're going to find up here. All right, after we create a request here, we need to make sure we do a wait. And then if we are successful, either way, we need to do response.json because the graph API always returns JSON. So we are always safe to do this. But if we actually succeed, 
we're going to get some data back. And I'm just going to typecast this data um, to be an object with an access token of string here. I'm sure we also, there's also a chance we might get an error here, but we're not going to handle this case. I'm just going to make the most simple API call possible here. Okay, so I'm not, um, I'm not uh, doing any error handling. Okay, so we get some data back and now we can return the access token. Okay. Now, just to do a little bit of error handling, if we just do if response okay, if this is not okay, well, then we can just throw a newer, an error here saying uh, have access token failed, something like this. All right, now after getting the app access token, we can debug the token. So I'm going to do a similar thing here. Well, I'm going to create a new function. This one's going to also be asynchronous. And here we're also going to do a fetch call. And uh, I need to make sure I add some parameters here. So the first is the app access token. And then I'm also going to take in the user token. Or it could be a page token. It's going to be some sort of token that I want to debug or verify. So in here, I'm going to get a response once again. I'm going to do a fetch once again. And this time, it's going to be a little bit different. So this time, I'm going to grab the Facebook Graph API to find up there. And I'm going to be hitting the debug token endpoint. And I'm going to pass in the input token, which is the token I'm debugging. So I'm going to pass in token here. And then also add in the access token which is going to be app access token. Okay. And a similar thing here, we're going to do a JSON, JSONification, if that's the word, <laughs> on the response. And then we're going to return the response. And uh, yeah, I could type this data because, but it's kind of big, so I'm just going to, say I know at least there will be a data property on it and there's going to be a property called scopes and that's going to be a string array. Okay, so I could return that. That's one thing. All right, so now I have my two functions here. So now I can go up into my handler and I can actually call uh, talk, uh, access token, uh, app access token. I can call this one to make sure I await it. And then need to make sure I made this asynchronous. Then I can grab that token and I can call debug token. Now the token that I want to verify is one I'm expecting coming from the outside. So I'm expecting it to be on request query that token. Now I can log out the scopes and also return them. All right, so after creating that logic, logic we're actually ready to um, do the login now and also debug our token after we do the login. So uh, what I'm missing here is just putting in the app ID and the secret and I can get that from my uh, developer dashboard. All right, I'm in here. Now this is my project, as you can see, and here is my app ID. I can just grab that app ID, put it here. And for the secret, I'm going to be hiding this one away. So I'm going to be putting it in a different file and uh, then importing it. All right, I put my secret in a separate file here. And uh, now I just need to make sure this one is actually named app underscore secret. Save it. 
can uh, now close this. I'm just going to keep it open. Uh, now I'm going to go into my app.tsx file and I'm going to make sure that here I have the same app ID. And uh, I made sure that I exported it. So from hello, uh, you can see I'm doing an export here. So I'm grabbing it also from the front end. And then now I want to add a little bit of logic to my login function. So uh, here you can see after I do login, uh, I'm just printing out the token, but I also want to debug it. So now I can do, I can make a fetch call here when basically reaching uh, local host 3000 API hello and here I need to make sure that I'm passing in my token okay so if you jump back to hello you remember that here I'm expecting it to be a query parameter called token and uh, that's the, exactly the one I'm passing in here so that should be all good now I'm just going to put it that then in, in here so if I get a response back I'm just going to log it out cool now that's looking all good actually. Now let's try to open up that ng-rock link that we have in this tab somewhere here. After opening that, you can see we get our local site here. I can press login. And here it says it can't read the web address because it's not included in the app's domain. Okay, so we need to make sure that we grab this domain and then go back to our developer dashboard here. Make sure we put in the right URL and then save that one. If you jump back here, try logging again. It is in fact working here. Now we do get a failed fetch, so our fetch call fails, but we do get the access token. And uh, the failure here is a course issue, and that's because we are trying to reach localhost from this ng-rock domain. So what we can do is we can put it on the same domain. And then let's retry. All right, we got a response. Okay, we just we don't really have the body here, but we get a 200, so that's a positive. Now, if I attach another, then this is getting a little bit ugly now. Uh, actually, I need to go back here and then do a response to JSON and then do another then here. And then I can lock out the data. Now, if you want to do this a little more neat, you could use a sync of eight, but I'm just going to do it quick and dirty. So this is how it's going to look. Now, if you go back, try to clear out the console, press login, and wait, well, here we go. Now we got our scopes here. So now we we're actually able to verify that, hey, this person allowed this scope and Hey, this person get permission to this page or what it may whatever it may be okay so that's our first step exploring the graph api for facebook i hope you learned a few things along the way and uh, yeah i'll see you in the next one